When one's a Christian, they're taught that they're the center of the universe, the purpose for creation. And when one abandons Christianity or many of the other Abrahamic religions, you're thrust into this position of having to understand these moral questions of our place as humans amongst the rest of these creatures that seem to have a purchase on life as well. Daniel Dennett, whom you mentioned, has answered this question himself, but I want to know from you, Professor Dawkins, as a biologist and atheist, how you've wrestled with the morality of how we as humans relate to animals, questions like eating meat or keeping them captive in zoos. The, the, the biology of morality, or the, the evolution of morality, is that the question? I, I, well, how, again, you, how do you feel about how our relationship is with animals? Oh, Understanding with animals. that we're another animal, like the fact that we're eating animals or, yes, or okay. trapping animals or caging animals. Right. Um, I think that, that evolution d does have moral implications in this, in this respect. Um, our morality, pretty, pretty universally, is speciesist. This word coined by Richard Ryder and popularized by Peter Singer. <laughs> um, by analogy with, with, with racist. So um, it's taken as pretty axiomatic in our morality and our political system even that the human species is unique and has an absolute wall around it and all other species, we've got to treat them kindly but they're not human, I mean they're, they're somehow other. So there's humans versus the rest. And so when you get something like the abortion debate um, all the argument is when does human life begin? Does it begin at conception? Does it begin after the last possible opportunity for these um, embryo to split into two and make identical twins because that would raise the embarrassing question of which twin gets the soul? Think about it. <laughs> um, or does, does human life begin at this, this trimester or that of that tri trimester. Note that all the emphasis is on, is on human. You, if, only, if you could just point out quite simply that um, the, 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 the human embryo is quite obviously far less capable of feeling pain or fear than an adult cow or pig. Yet because, it's not, because a cow and a pig is not human, that somehow ruled out. It doesn't matter. They're not. They're not human. Um, the, the, the human embryo is human, and therefore is sacred. Well, this is deeply unevolutionary. Obviously, uh, another way to express that would be to say: Imagine, as a thought experiment, and there's nothing wrong with thought experiments, that the intermediates that link us to, say, chimpanzees had happened not to go extinct. We are linked by our ancestors going back, 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 back to whatever it is, eight million years ago, to the common ancestor with chimpanzees, and then there's another set of links from the common ancestor to modern chimpanzees. That means that if only they hadn't gone extinct, we would be joined to modern chimpanzees by an unbroken chain of intermediates, all of which would have been classified in the same species as each other, there would have been no sudden cut-off point, all of which could have mated with, in a fertile way, their immediate neighbors in the chain. So if you imagine the chain ranged out uh, across, as I've done, across Africa, um, with humans at one end and uh, chimpanzees at the other, holding hands, and each one in the chain would be the same species as the next one in the chain and capable of interbreeding with the next one in the chain. And yet at one end we have humans, the other end we have chimpanzees. And you could do the same thing for any other animal you like. You could do it for kangaroos, humans and kangaroos. There's, there is always going to be a chain of intermediates linking us to every other species a chain of, in, of, of in intermediates, every one of whom would have been regarded as the same species as its neighbor. It's paradoxical, but you can see immediately that it follows from the evolutionary uh, worldview. It's a, it's a matter of sheer accident that the intermediates between us and chimpanzees are all extinct. That's the only thing that enables us to be speciesist and to, to lock chimpanzees away in cages in zoos or do experiments on them 
which we would not do, we wouldn't even, we wouldn't do to a, to a human embryo. Uh, and do we really want to base our morality on the merest accident that the intermediates just happen to be extinct? It's a very convenient thing that they're extinct because it really does mean that we can draw a line around the human species because there aren't any inter intermediates. And it's very unlikely that any intermediates will be discovered. I mean, it's, one can make the thought experiment that somebody might find intermediates in some African forest and that would throw us into a moral pandemonium because you'd then have to have, in order to maintain our speciesist morality, you would then have to have courts of law like they had in apartheid South Africa to decide whether somebody passes for white. You'd have to have courts of law to decide whether some intermediate passes for human. Fortunately, we don't have to do that. Um, but that's just two indications of where the evolutionary worldview potentially could drive a coach and horses through our, our, uh, mor our present moral system with respect to other animals.